Hello guys, this is Deepika from MyTutorialRack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to go ahead and talk about Apex Triggers. Now, what are Apex Triggers? Apex can be invoked by using triggers. Apex Triggers enable you to perform custom actions before or after changes to the Salesforce records, like inserting a new record or updating an existing record or deleting a particular record. Apex Triggers are like stored procedures which execute whenever a particular event occurs. Apex triggers executes before and after an event occurs on the records. So what are the different kinds of events where we can fire a trigger? These are the some of the events on which we could fire a trigger like insert of a new record, updating the existing record, deleting a particular record or merging the records, absurd operation on the records and the undelete operations on the record. You already know you're familiar with these of different kinds of these operations what is an insert what is an update what is undelete what is delete etc so these are the events on which we can fire a particular trigger what are different types of trigger there are two types of trigger one is called the before trigger and the other one is called as the after triggers now before triggers are used to update or validate the record values before they are saved to the database this is an important point before triggers are used to update a particular record values before they are saved to the database whereas the after triggers are used to access the field values that are set by the system so like such as record IDs or the last modified field etc and to affect changes in other records such as logging into an audit table or firing asynchronous events with the queue the records that fire the after trigger are read only this is the most important point the records that fire the after trigger are read only triggers can also modify other records of the same type as the records that initially fired the trigger. For example, if a trigger fires up after an update of a contact A, the trigger can also modify contacts B, C, and D. Because Triggers can cause other records to change and because these changes can in turn fire more trigger, the Apex Runtime Engine considers all these operations as a single unit of work and sets the limit on the number of operations that can be performed to prevent the infinite recursion. If you update or delete a record in its before trigger or delete a record in its after trigger, you will receive a runtime error. So you need to remember these two points. They are very important and there might be some questions related from these topics in the exam. The next we have is the implementation considerations. So what are these implementation considerations? Upset triggers fire both before and after the insert or before and after the update triggers as appropriate. So based upon what it is, they will get fired. Next type of triggers we have is the merge triggers. Now the merge triggers fire both before and after the delete triggers for the losing records and before update triggers for the winning records only. Another point to remember here is triggers that execute after a record has been undeleted only work with the specific objects. Field history is not recorded until the end of a trigger. If you query field history in a trigger, you do not see any history for the current transaction. Field history tracking honors the permissions of the current user. If the current user does not have the permission to directly edit an object or a field, but they activate a trigger, that changes the object or field with history tracking enabled, no history of the change is recorded. Callouts call must be made asynchronously from a trigger. Now, what is the reason for that? Because the trigger process is not blocked while waiting for the external service response. The asynchronous callout is made in a background process and the response is received when the external service returns it. So you do not have to depend on the callout call operation to finish because there will be an asynchronous callouts. Bulk triggers. You've heard about this bulk triggers a lot of time. Now, what are these bulk triggers? All triggers are bulk triggers by default. And they can process multiple records at a time. 
and you must always plan on processing more than one record at a time. A very important point here to remember is an event object that is defined as recurring is not processed in bulk for insert, delete, or update triggers. So there might be a question related to this that, okay, which of the object is defined as recurring and is not processed in bulk for these kind of operations. So the answer to that would be event object. Bulk triggers can handle both the single record updates as well as the bulk operations like data import, force.com, bulk API calls, mass actions like record owner changes and deletes, recursive Apex methods and triggers that invoke the bulk DML statements. So these are the different ways where the bulk triggers can handle both the single record updates as well as the bulk operations. Now let's take a look at the trigger syntax. Now we're going to go ahead and do a lot of examples on the triggers in the upcoming tutorial. This particular tutorial and the next tutorial will be just giving you like a theoretical definitions and the implementation of the triggers. But we're going to go ahead and do some examples that will make that will get you familiar with how to create a trigger, how it works and different aspects of it. So this is just like giving you a background information on the triggers. So the trigger syntax, as you remember here, the first thing that you need to specify is the keyword trigger and then the name of the trigger. So if you're whatever the name you want to put it like an update trigger or the record trigger, whatever the name is, so that is going to be the trigger name. On which object? Are you doing it on a custom object? Are you doing it on a standard object? What is the name of the object that you wanted to go ahead and fire this trigger on? So if you're talking about contact records or you're talking about account object, you're talking about the customer object or the invoices object, etc. So you have to specify the name of the object here. And then trigger events. Do you want it to do it before the record gets updated or after the record is inserted, deleting of a particular record? So those are the trigger events. If you have if you have multiple trigger events, then you can specify those events with a comma and then you're going to specify what this trigger is supposed to do. So let's say if there is a record that gets inserted, if an account record gets inserted, what is the action you wanted to do? So you can write that particular thing inside of this code block. So every time a record, a contact record or an account record gets inserted, this trigger will get fired. So this is what the trigger syntax is. Now the trigger events can be a comma separated list of one or more of these events. So you can write a before insert or a before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete or after undelete. So as I already told you, there are two different types of trigger. One is the before trigger and the other one is the after trigger. Before triggers, you already know what before triggers are. So before triggers are used to update or validate the record values before they are saved to the database. After triggers are used to access the field values that are set by the system. And they're also responsible to affect the changes in other records, such as logging into an audit table or firing the asynchronous events with a queue. And remember, the records that fire the after trigger are read only. In the next tutorial, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the trigger context variables. We'll take a look at what are these and what are the different types of trigger constant context variables that are available. So I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you so much.